You signed with the Patriots, and we're just going to get right into it here. We're going to waste no time. Right, you ahead. signed with the Patriots, and Bill Belichick was your coach. Mm. Obviously one of the greatest football coaches of all time. And um, now he, he retired. Oh, no, he is not there anymore. What do you think about what, you know, how do you feel about that, you know, him not being there? I know you guys had a special relationship. Uh, you know, I was there with him for three years, so. Yeah, that's just how the game go. You know, I don't, it's not that um, hurt or sad about it, but, you know, I will play for one of the greatest coaches, mm. you know, that mm. ever coached any sport. So I was happy in, by my time, but it was, I guess it was just his time and the Patriots' time to part ways, and now he's on to his new ever endeavors. Can you give us a Belichick story? Nope. You can't give us anything, man. Everybody always want Belichick stories. Okay, what a, what about a a good thing about him? How like a whoa, he was genius, defensive something. Give us something. Oh, well, uh, I'll just say, in in the team meetings, he'll tell you exactly how the game plan gonna go, and uh, when you come back in and watch the film, like he it'd be like to the T. I mean, and then of course it's like cut ups, but it'd be like. All right, well, we ran this play. We knew they was gonna run this play. We practiced this play, and then they they run that play. That that'd be like their bread and butter. And so, uh, like he he knew a lot of football, and it was all all off like the coaching tree. And he would break it down to like the 1960s, and we'd be watching <laughs> old. Oh crap! Yeah, we'd be watching some old school <laughs> film in there, but uh, it'd be philosophies and coaching trees, and I think that's how he was so good at what he did because he just knew so much about the game. Did it, for the outside looking in, did it surprise you when, I don't know his first name, Mayo became the, did you did you see that? Did you feel like, because I was outside looking, I was like, dang, you know, they hired internally, and uh, it just seemed to surprise, I feel, to some around the league and especially myself. Was that surprising to you? I think you was the only one surprised <laughs> <laughs> all around the I league. I thought they would have looked. Nah, I tried to, I tried to sound professional. They've been saying for years that he was going to be the successful. there, and it just didn't really work. Hey, they, no, no. You don't, do, you don't do your information work. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not investigating the New England Patriots <laughs> when I play for the Baltimore Ravens, but yeah, I was like, dang, podcast. that was surprising. No. It was, it was surprising to me. Okay, my bad. Uh, no, we... Uh, we and he kinda, was black. Which just African American head coaches is just hard to hard to do that. But we kind of we kind of saw it coming, uh, and saw him being primed for that position, uh, and getting groomed to be the next head coach. But uh, we just didn't know when it was gonna happen. What's your, do you have any interaction with uh, Robert Kraft? I do. Yeah. He seems like a very uh, player cool owner. He is. Uh, he sit in our uh, team meetings. Oh, really? Yeah. Like yeah. weekly? When he Daily. Up. Like he's watching film. Huh? He's watching film? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, he's really like on staff. He, he, his office upstairs. He be there every day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kraft, Jonathan, uh, they be there every day. So did you see what he tweeted about Coach Belichick? Br no. Uh, you did I it? missed it. You did yeah, it? I didn't do... Hey, don't even worry about that tweet, man. It's, uh, nothing got tweeted. Nothing got tweeted. What did he say? He said that Belichick's clearly not the greatest coach because he couldn't find a job. Literally. But even though that sounds like something I would say, that's it's not exactly what I said, nor is it... What did you say? I, when I went back and read it, I realized it did look like I was calling him not a great coach. Not the greatest coach of all time. But really, you know how there was like this random argument like going on for a little bit was like, was it Brady? Was it Bill? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just saying it was it was more Brady than Bill. Why why was you saying that? That's just that's my opinion on the on the matter. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? But I made it seem like He's not a good coach because Yeah. And I did that was actually I that's not how I intended it to be. But when I look back on it, I could see how it was misconstrued. The word you probably didn't know that one. I don't think you pronounced that right. But it's, <laughs> mis, 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 mis we we have literally the two greatest recruiters in the NFL, the two greatest player GMs in the league. Marlon not a player GM. I literally got Odell Beckham to the Ravens. He was coming there regardless. But I had a small percentage help. They pay for it. 
<laughs> it doesn't. No. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Look at the timeline of when I said Odo Beckham, Baltimore Ravens. It matches. To what? It matches to what? I'm saying the date. Then he signs. Months later, he pondered on that. Said, "Is there a chance?" <laughs> who, I just think who's I have the best free agent you've brought to the Patriots? Uh, but <laughs> it was it was difficult. It was difficult out there. Let's talk a little bit, uh, being that Mr. Cheetah walked in. Let's talk about those robberies in that division. Obviously, you know, Buffalo, Miami, you know, that's a, that's a good quarterbacks there. You got to get back there and try to sack those guys. What is it like being in that division with, you know, those guys? I'm just tired of playing in Miami earlier in the year. Because the heat. Man, they be cheap. Is it really a disadvantage? Because it do be hot. I remember we played the first game there. It was, I cramped up. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a different it's a disadvantage, and then you can't be you can't like look, cause the sun be right in your eye, so the whole time you're on the sideline, you either looking down or you got your eyes closed. So do you think guys like Tyreek are they good players or is it just the sun? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of both. The the more sun you get, that's my. The more sun you get, I think the the better and faster you are. I think that's how I go. Talk to me about now, as we were teammates uh, for a couple years, good time, good time. And, you know, talk about the, you know, because oftentimes, and this might be an interesting take, and it might end up being a small shot, and we're not gonna, you know, it is what it is, you know, go just ahead. be honest. Go ahead. You know what they always say, you know, it's always not green on the other side, you know what I mean? You put on the nine and you became, you know, this, you know, I mean, you were already pretty good, but you put on the nine and you really became a household name, the red sleeves, your trend, you know, that was really your thing. How was it like, you know, going there? Was the grass a little greener or was it a little paler? Right, hey, bro. You see how I put that in? Yeah, y'all got to dissolve the pod. Dissolve the podcast, man. 